Today I'm going to show you how to repair a damaged photograph like a pro using AI and Photoshop. Pock marks all over the place, no problem. Photo grain, no problem. Rips, tears, and gouges, no problem. Here's how it works. All right, so right off the bat, I want us to get our bearings. This is the much loved paper positive photograph from the olden days that we're gonna work with. Obviously it's rip torn, it's got all kinds of dust and scratches. It's worse than that as we'll see in just a moment. And we're gonna turn it into this absolutely pristine work of restoration right here. But before we start, I, I want to really uh, zoom in on what we got to work with. This image comes to us, by the way, from Dreams Time, in case you're curious, and you can learn more in the description. But notice the absolutely myriad problems that we have going on. So as you can see, it's not just the 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 the, the rips and the tears and, and the surface wear and that kind of thing. It, although we do have spots all over the place, so the, the equivalent of dust and scratches, right? But we also have, and I want you to notice this, you're going to have to look closely. We have color noise, big modular color noise. So, so modeling in other words, and you can see how the, the color is varying from kind of a neutral gray to blues and purples throughout. And then we have, of course, all kinds of luminance noise throughout this image. And we're going to smooth that out. We're going to make it look absolutely young again, even though it's clearly a vintage photograph. All right. So Here's some things to know right up front. Fact, Photoshop AI is your friend. I want to establish that because I know it's a pretty controversial topic. A lot of people just think that the AI imaging is going to steal your soul and your artwork and everything that's good about humanity. But in this case, not so much. So if you're a retoucher, it's actually really useful and it's not going to steal your job. It's going to enhance your job. I'm just saying. Up to you if you believe me. You can disagree. Here are the six steps to pro restoration as things stand now. First, you want to convert. I'm going to go through all this, of course. But I just want you to see the steps. Convert the image to RGB so that you can... So you have a lot more room to work that way. So don't work in grayscale. Profile your image. Give it a color profile. We'll see that in a moment. Convert the, 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 the image to a smart object so that you can apply non-destructive smart filters. Lightly apply the photo restoration filter, which is a neural filter, by the way, and we'll see that. But give it a light touch. Although, you know, it's, it's a moderate touch, really. Select and apply areas of generative fill. That's going to help you out a lot. And then paint away blemishes with the remove tool. I'm saying the remove tool just because it gives you more flexibility than the standard spot healing brush. Although you can go with that if you prefer. That also can work. All right, so let's go back to this guy right here. And I'm going to zoom out. And let us start step by step. So very important step number one. Go up to the image menu and choose mode and then make sure that you have a check mark in front of RGB color. If you have a check mark in front of grayscale, do yourself a favor and switch it to RGB color. That is going to triple the file size, by the way, but it's also going to give you a lot more flexibility and control. Now, in my case, it's pretty obvious that this already is an RGB image because we have that color modeling that I mentioned a moment ago. Also, if you're scanning the photograph or somehow capturing it with a phone or that kind of thing, then, well, it should come in RGB, but make sure you're scanning it RGB as well. Again, just gives you the most flexibility. Next, you want to go to the edit menu. Notice, notice by the way, you can see this is an unprofiled image because up here in the title tab, it has a little pound sign hashtag inside the parenthesis and that show parentheses that is and that shows you that it's not color profiled you want it to be profiled that's just common sense by the way otherwise photoshop kind of has no idea what you're doing so go to the edit menu and choose assign profile right here if it doesn't have a profile already probably won't and then just go ahead the working uh rgb model is just fine whatever you're sure working rgb space in my case it's srgb as by default so just go ahead and turn that on and then you can you can select 
the custom profile if you want to, but there's not really any reason to do that. You just want Photoshop to have an establishing model to work from. Click OK. All right. Step three, one of the more important steps is to convert this guy to a smart object so you can apply photo restoration as a smart filter. It's a non-destructive smart filter. So just go ahead and double click on background if you're seeing background in the layers panel and give it a name just so that you're establishing a name because this will be the underlying name of the smart object. It, it goes to the heart of things, so it's good to name things up front. Click OK, and then assuming you're working with Rectangular Marquee Tool as by default up here toward the top of the toolbox, then right-click anywhere inside the image and choose Convert to Smart Object, and that way you're ready to apply a smart filter. All right, let's do that by going to the Filter menu and choosing Neural Filters. This third guy down just happens to also be first to my list because that's the last thing I assigned. Anyway, neural filters was what you're looking for. And it's going to take a moment to load up all those neural filters. And the one you're looking for currently is at the bottom of the stack. It could change any old time. It's this guy right here, photo restoration. It is beta as things stand now. And so far as beta goes, it's good. And you may have to download it anytime you see these little cloud icons. You got to download the filter before you apply it. It only takes a few seconds if you have a fast internet connection. But anyway, I'm going to turn it on because that's kind of a first step. Now, this part doesn't go very quickly. You'll see that you have a, a progress right bar right here, that is to say, that says processing on a device, which is, as opposed to processing, of course, in the cloud. Hey, real quick, after restoring your photo, you want to add some color? Not that fakey stuff you get from the Colorize filter. Excuse me, fellas, are your lips chapped? I'm talking real full color infusion. In that case, join me at my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now, back to the restoration. And a few moments later, it may take a while, it's sometimes frustrating in terms of its lethargy, but you will see that a lot of things have been smoothed over. The, the noise should largely go away and the facial details should appear sharper. And that's a function of photo enhancement which is going to smooth things over and get rid of the noise and that kind of stuff. And then enhance face, which is going to sharpen the facial details only. So notice that it doesn't affect th these guys' jackets. So that, that that's going to remain at, at the same level of focus it was before. But it is kind of going to redraw the eyes and the mouth and the nose and, and even the ears to a certain extent. And the hair, by the way, based on... AI. And it's actually just kind of a precursor to Firefly. It's legit AI, in my humble opinion. Now, what we're not seeing is any of the scratches gone. Now, to make that happen, you'd want to crank up the scratch reduction value. I'm going to take it all the way up to 100, just for the sake of demonstration. And I, I, I will say that every time you make any modification, it is going to take what I would casually call forever to preview here inside this dialog box, but it does do a miraculous job of getting rid of the scratches. Would, would, would you not agree? But it also does a miraculous job of messing up the image. So uh, let's take a look at the brothers, ostensibly their brothers anyway. His hair has uh, really gone south. We've lost a lot of focus in the hair detail up toward the top. And his hair is just divergent. So we have a real seam at this point, that vertical seam right there. So that is too high. So even though it's tempting to maximize that scratch reduction value, I'm going to tell you to keep it low. So this is where you want to ratchet down your your levels of modification and again it is going to take a moment it does give you this kind of like in this case it's saying 16 seconds to go that in my experience is absolutely untrue it's just going to take forever but notice your time investment you're sitting on your hands that is and waiting for photoshop to do its thing is worth it 
This guy's hair is much better at the top. It looks much more naturalistic. And this guy's hair does not have a big, abrupt, vertical seam in it. So if you want to save yourself some time, I don't know if this is going to save you time or not, but the values I like, I'm just going to take this down a little bit, is Photo Enhancement 50, which is the default. Scratch Reduction 10 for an image like this, which has, you know, its share problems, and then Enhance Face 50. As opposed to anything higher. I think this one actually previews pretty quickly. Let's see. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a moment. Yeah, look. We, we have very sharply defined facial details. But they're just out of keeping with everything else, don't you think? And then we have this really abrupt transition in this guy's hair between his very sharply detailed hair and then his sort of mucky detailed hair up there. So anyway, I'm going to take this down to 50 and hope. I hope that that, got, that was cached. It was. Now, this is very important, by the way. I should have made this an entire step, actually. You've got to go down to output here and make sure it's not set to something stupid like new layer. So irritates me that it's not smart enough to know I'm working with a smart object, so I want a non-destructive smart filter so later I can make modifications to these three values if necessary. You can play with the adjustments, but I'm going to tell you, most of that work is already done automatically. So play with them if you want to. But in my case, I'm just going to click OK with output set to smart filter in order for us to, as a, a, a cum cumulative group here, to see that we now have a non-destructive smart filter editable as well. So if you wanted to make any modifications to the three values, you would double click on smart filters right there. You don't need the filter mask, so you can right click on it and choose delete filter mask because it's just a waste of space in the layers panel. All right, so we have done the first three steps and that's pretty amazing. The first four steps, I'm sorry. That's pretty amazing that we've been able to make this kind of progress, even though we had to wait for Photoshop to do its thing, that you're able to make that much of a difference using a single filter with th three slider bars. That's not enough, however. We still have some work to do, and that work is best done using a couple of kind of AI features in Photoshop. The generative fill is definitely AI relies on Photoshop working hand in hand with Firefly. And then paint away blem blemishes with a remove tool. I would call that more, I would say that's more in the camp of machine learning, but remove tool is still a very useful feature. All right, so I'm gonna zoom out here. And now at this point, we still have some issues, I would say. And actually I'm looking at the wrong image. It looks great. I was like, well, I don't really see any issues here. This. Photograph has some issues. I was I was expecting this above this guy's head. Notice this did not get corrected by that scratches value, whatever it's called. I forget now, but you know what I'm talking about. And it'd be too ponderous for me to double click on that and find out his exact name. But what you do now for the big stuff, right? is I recommend you can work with the rectangular marquee tool because it does kind of do good enough job a good enough job in many cases. But what I'm going to say is the lasso tool is your better bet. You can, you know, you can try out the object selection tool, but this is a grayscale image, so it's going to struggle. But lasso tool is a good way to go because general approximate selections are really your friends. And so what I'm going to do here is select down, well, select this region right here above this guy's head because obviously there's a big, huge crease in the photograph. But notice I'm avoiding his hair. You can get closer to the hair. I'm shift dragging now with the lasso tool. You can get closer to the hair if you want to in order to make sure you've selected all that background. I would advise against selecting into the hair because oftentimes that just confuses generative fill. Now, the next thing you want to do is go to the window menu and choose the info command. And I'm recommending this for those of you working on high resolution images. Although typically when you're doing photo restoration, you don't need a ton of res resolution because the original photographs probably not that high res. But anyway, you know, the film grain and everything that's going on. But notice the width and height values here. 594, 326, that's the bounding box around that lasso. Yeah, by the way, so it's big. It's actually not that the lasso isn't really that big. But you want to make sure it's less than a megapixel. So less than 1,024 in either direction or 
cumulative. You can get out your calculator if it's if it's wider, but it's not very tall, that kind of thing. It might be okay. But generally, if you stay inside the 1024s, you're going to be good in both directions. In this case, it's it's uh, you know it's it's half wide and whatever. Anyway, it's 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 anyway. It's way less than a megapixel. I'm not even going to whip out my calculator. Anyway, I've got this. I'll say anyway one more time just to cement that word. Notice that I've got this tedious, uh, you know, contextual tax bar right here. And uh, if you're not seeing it, you can go to the window menu and turn it on for a moment because it is very helpful for generate to fill. And then click generate to fill and then don't give it a prompt. Just click generate because prompts are going to mess it up, generally speaking, for what we're trying to. For more precise control, try drawing your selection in the shape that you want to generate. All right, it's got these new tips. These tips are really good, by the way. These, uh, uh, you know, in this particular version of Photoshop Beta, I'm, I'm liking them, and they're helpful. But then, make sure your properties panel is up on screen. I'll give it a little more room. So you can switch between the variations just in case you want to test them out. And I'm going to go with the smoothest of the variations, which is number one. And then, you know, if you don't like it, then you could try it again. And then if you want to kind of make this detail a little better, you'd select that area, click generate. Of course, we're working less than a megapixel. Trim file sizes by deleting unused variations. It's perfect for managing. It's just, that's just BS advice. It mean, it's like delete your layers because they're going to take up too much room. But yeah, you could delete your variations if you want to. They that will save space. You know, if you if you have a much hated variation you just don't want, you can get rid of it. But in my case, I just kind of well, I don't know. You know, I'm sure I'll learn over time that I want to delete these things and slim my file sizes, but. All right, let's select into this guy's hair. Maybe this right here. Make sure that we're under a megapixel. We are, and we're going to generate, and we're not going to enter a prompt. to remove. Do you enjoy me reading these things? I hope so. To remove content, try generating without a prompt. Yes, yes. Fill a selection based on the surroundings. Yeah, and that, that's true. It, it's it's, it's going to look at the area surrounding the selection outline. That's why it's important not to select too far into the hair, for example. Now, you could, right? This guy's hair is pretty messy. Let's try to fix that. In which case, just select inside the hair. Don't go out of the hair. So I'm going to drop into this. This may or may not work. So I'm going to try kind of doing this number here. Notice that I'm skirting the background. I'm trying not to select it because if you go too far into it, well, it's, the hair can go very wonky because it is really basing it on the edge of the selection outline. So it's looking at the pixels around the edge as it's trying to make this determination, assuming that you just click generate to fill and you don't enter a prompt. Because if you do enter a prompt, good luck to you. It's going to make a mess of things. If you enter hair, that's just going to mess things up. Got feedback? Who cares? Anyway, so I'm going to do this without a prompt, as you can see. And a moment later, but right about there is when the prize, yes, it goes away. We have hair. Is it any good? Well, not really. Not so far. Let's see what the next variation looks like. It's okay. How about this variation? It's terrible. So what should we do? Well, we could, in, in a case like this where you just don't like anything, I suggest you undo your way back out. So you have the selection outline again, because you didn't, I didn't like any of those, right? I didn't like any of those variations. And I don't, and what happens if you keep just generating on top of the old selection outline is the mask um, get, the second you click generate to fill, which I'll do, the mask, that selection outline gets converted to a different kind of mask. It gets kind of smudgier and bigger. Try adding feathering or opacity. Tell generate contact content blend with your scene. Just start with quick mask. No, don't do that. Anyway, you can, whatever. I, it's not my most recommended thing. That looks like good hair, actually. I like sharply defined edges by the way to make my point right here because if you start just smushing and feathering then you get smushy feathery edges which you don't want of course that here's okay 
You know, what about this hair? He's okay. All right. You know, that's something. And uh, I think, yeah, I think that first hairdo is more suave. And then you could go in there and make smaller selections. And then if you wanted to, you could go right there and grab that edge. I don't want to belabor this, but I do want you to see, you know, uh, there's, uh, some more tips. Avoid using instructions like add, fill, make, and change. Instead, describe what you want to generate or don't. Don't add a description at all because you're just going to mess things up for restoration purposes. Ooh, that is nice. But we can check out other variations. They're not going to be that different. That's pretty good. I like that one. Well, no, I think I like that third one. Whatever, it's up to you. All right, now at this point, let's say I'm done with generative fill because this isn't going to work. This here, I'm going to select this collar. Actually, this collar, let's see. This collar is going to be, you're going to be better off selecting it with the object selection tool. So let's give that a try. I'll just go ahead and grab it. And so it's like, is that a pattern? Did you just have a weirdly patterned shirt that has just a bunch of junk on this side? Or is, is that a mark? I think it's a mark. And now I'll just switch back to the rectangular marquee tool so I don't keep lighting up the screen. Generative fill. And if my experience is is to be believed you can uh move generative layer this is cool you can move a generative layer and regenerate it in a new position that is true and you can experiment with that that's not going to help us we can't really see because it's off screen i hate these orange messages these new orange ones versus the old blue ones because they're off screen half the time but anyway it just said what i'm trying to do with this collar is lewd and uh or derogatory or i'm doing something wrong to you know whatever of course it's untrue it's just this collar that's got some damage but i can't make this one work so you may run into that i'm sure you in fact will run into that but anyway so what do we do at this point well here's what i'm going to recommend is that we now switch our focus to the remove tool so here it is right there, right? And, 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 and in the old days, I should stress, in the old days, I, I was going to show this, but yeah, it would have been tedious anyway. You would have had to use on the entire image in order to, to, to make the entire thing better. Back when we were looking at this before the smart filter, right? You would have just had to rely on the healing brush and the spot healing brush and stuff like you know there's fans of the uh clone stamp tool because it just clones it doesn't try to it just it's fuzzy it doesn't try to do any miracle work around the edges but and a lot of photographers hate that but whatever anyway it, it, we to, to, to heal this guy's nose for example would have been really hard i'm going to create a new layer up here i'm just going to press Control shift and command shift N on the mac and I'm going to call this remove because eventually I will be using the remove tool. But for now, I'll use the uh, spot healing brush and I'll turn on sample all layers up here in the options bar. And you would want to work with content aware so that uh, Photoshop is looking at all kinds of different parts of the image. But notice if I heal up the, this guy's nose like so that it does an admirable job i would say but obviously that's no good problem is right the transition doesn't make any sense and he all of a sudden looks like he's got you know he went well well suddenly has got a weird corner on his nose and, and and so you can you know some of the image is going to work out pretty well where spot healing brush is concerned might be able to get away with healing into his hair i'm going too far right i'm making big brush strokes at a time but still that's not bad anyway the problem is where the nose is concerned right i wouldn't I, there's just nothing like i'd like to use a different tool like the healing brush which you know you you have to specify where your source is and then paint it onto the destination, but there's no good source. There's no detail in the image that's anything like the bridge of that nose. So anyway, so that I, I was gonna belabor that and then turns out I did. All right, so there it is. It, it, obviously just that one neural filter, what it was, photo restoration is so great. It really does a huge amount of work, but now what we need to do, we don't need the info panel anymore because I'm not drawing selections. What we're going to do is switch to the remove tool. And there's a reason 
It's not that it's inherently better every single time. And maybe in a future video, I'll, I'll kind of discuss when I think this tool is better than Spot Healing Brush and vice versa. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and grab it because it has two very useful checkboxes up here. Now notice sample all layers is turned off by default. That's no good because we're working on an independent layer. After all, that's what we want to do because we wouldn't be able to work directly on a photo layer because it's a smart object. So we want to work on an independent layer and we want uh, to sample from all the layers that we have going on. So you turn that checkbox on, obviously, and then remove after each stroke, turn that off. Now that's I, I hesitate to just say definitely turn it off. It, 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 it's a little bit of a malfunctioning feature at this point. Sometimes it works really, really great. Sometimes it gives you weird, bizarre, half black, half white results or half gray, half black. It's, it's, it, it can malfunction. But when it functions, I mean, when you turn it off and it functions right, that way you, 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 you don't have to remove after every stroke. When it functions, it, it works great. And so let me show you what I'm talking about. Hopefully it will work out nicely. And at this point, we just get these little magenta overlays. And now you can go as nuts as you want. So I was telling you with uh, generative fill, you want to make a selection that's not any bigger than a megapixel. So 1024 in either direction. With this guy, this would normally, selecting little areas across the image like this, that would be more than a megapixel because this entire region would be considered by generative fill in Firefly. This feature, remove, the remove tool, does not rely on Firefly. As I say, it does rely on some kind of machine learning, so it's not really AI necessarily, but it is pattern recognition and that kind of thing. But it's not going to ruin the resolution of the image. You're not going to get low resolution results, even if you paint all over the place. The only problem with painting all over the place like I am is that if you don't like what it does, then you're going to have to paint again. Anyway, now that I've painted a few places, just to, you know, sort of get some bearings here, I'll press the enter key in order to apply my change. So you have to press enter in order to invoke the tool. And at this point, I'm really crossing my fingers that it doesn't make a mess of things. Because what you do, if it does, really hoping it doesn't, come on. You're taking too long. You're making me nervous. The, the, the thing you're going to have to do is restart Photoshop. That's pretty much it. Worst case scenario, you have to restart your machine. I haven't really seen a restart your machine scenario. I am now witnessing the longest delay I've ever seen associated with this tool. So this is the problem with remove after each stroke being off. If it were on, I would be removing after each stroke. Oh, phew. It, it succeeded. It finished and it worked out beautifully. All right, so let's go in closer here. Both these guys have kind of lip trouble. So let's go ahead and solve that. And by the way, remove after each stroke. If it is giving you trouble, just turn it on. Turn it back on is the way to make it behave. And that way it just goes ahead and does one little brush stroke at a time. And you can just get a sense, you know, you're not investing too much time in anything. I don't know. That, uh, yeah, I kind of like removing that detail, actually. And we've got a, a thing in his brow. There's all kinds of things. I could spend the rest of my life on this part of the project. And this is the most time-consuming part. You know, the, the neural filter aside, it did take its time. But I am, oh, I pressed the wrong key. I just pressed the P key. So I'm going to switch back to the remove tool, which you get, get by pressing J, if you want to remember that. J for surgery is our gag where that's concerned. But anyway, I'm going to tap there in order to see, yeah, that makes that go away. That's nice. And uh, right there on his nose, that doesn't look natural to me. I'm sure it is, but I think if we paint it away, it's going to look like a better nostril. And I think it does. I think that looks a little more natural. This is the trick, right? Okay, for this, for the collar, we want this checkbox off. Remove after each stroke. Because otherwise, you're going to sit there and wait after each little brush stroke you apply. Now, the thing about painting away these weird smudges on this guy's collar and i think they just show up on the collar better than anywhere else you can see they're still on his neck as well right there 
is that the collar is so very white. So there's no, there's so much contrast going on. And now I will, now this, by the way, this is very important. I want you to notice this. You can paint over the edge of a detail like so. That's kind of what the remove tools is designed to do. And now I'll press the enter key because it, it is capable of recognizing that edge and painting a, th a through line. See how it did that? It did a very nice job actually. And now I'll paint away a few more things and maybe I can paint in a better edge to that collar. I'm not sure if that's gonna work that well, but we'll see right there. See what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'd say that's better. This time you do not have variations. I wish you did. I wish you had variations for the remove tool so that you could say, ah, that didn't work out so well. Try again. And I also went ahead, actually, I did some work down here. I, I am going to dwell on this for a moment just because I think this needs a little bit of additional attention. If you decide to go back to generative fill, I recommend you go back to a generative fill layer because you can see they're all stacked on top of each other. Stay under the remove layer that you created. And then I'm going to go ahead and select this region, generative fill, just go ahead and generate. Well, we, uh, you, uh, if you don't want to generate something, commands like remove, no, or without can help. I'd be very surprised if that were true, but you can give that a try. It's just that Firefly is not that responsive to some of that stuff. Generative fill that we are invoking Firefly whenever you're you know, calling upon generative fill. Need more room? Ooh, explore generative expand. Don't do that. It, can be, it gives you low res results. Oh, what's this look like? Let's check it out. What, wasn't I working down below? Did I, did I mess up Was in my enthusiasm for pointing out that I'm not that excited about that, that generative expand? Uh, well, yeah, I think I'm minus. So I'll just go ahead and select, keep the taskbar at your fingertips. You know, good luck with that. Um, well, that didn't really make any difference, did it? I'm not sure why. Oh, it's over here complaining that this is, oh, got it. Oh, that's it. This is a lewd detail down here. Whatever. Anyway, I'll go ahead and click. Uh, it really, honestly, needs to, the Firefly needs to correct that one because it does that way too often. Dreaming up a new background? Don't do that. All right, because the new background will be low res. And then we'll just go ahead. That just looked like a repeated lapel. I think it was real, a real detail, but it didn't look right. Didn't find what you're looking for. Generate it again. Yeah, you can do that. And uh, a moment later, with any luck, this smudgy thing will go away. And let's see if we can find it. That's a better one. And we have a beautifully restored image. Thanks to, I really want to emphasize, thanks to... A bunch, well, some just old school stuff. Convert to RGB, very important. So you have more room to work, more channels to work with. Profile your image so that it, Photoshop knows what color profile you're working with. Just a really great idea. Convert to a smart object. So far, no AI. Lightly apply photo restoration. That's AI. Select and apply areas of generative fill. Solid AI has to communicate with Firefly on a fly and paint away blemishes with the remove tool at the very least. Machine learning, all of your friends here inside Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And don't forget to colorize a photo like a pro. Join me at patreon.com slash deke now. Then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.